G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Does your equipment hang to the right or to the left? Is your output a bit sloppy? Then you may need to collimate your telescope. And if you have a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, this video is for you. My man, recently I had some collimation issues and I decided to undo the whole secondary mirror. So I'm gonna show you what I discovered and a few little tips and tricks to get you collimated perfectly. Like many of my videos, this is one that I will store as my own personal reference because I'll forget all of this and then when I need to be reminded and learn it again, I'll just Google myself and find this video. Now, collimation is something that can take your images to the next level because as it slowly slips out of collimation from the factory, your images start to get blurrier and blurrier at such a small incremental rate that you probably don't even notice until you go to do a planet and then suddenly every pixel counts and you want to squeeze as much detail as you can out of the max resolution of your telescope. And this is where collimation comes in handy. By aligning the secondary mirror perfectly down the tube, we can get pinpoint stars and it can resolve the tiniest little details on the planet's surface. Hopefully this video works out for you and you learn something and your images get better. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. You might notice something different about my telescope today. <laughs> What's going on? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dr. Zach, and you'll notice here that the telescope is pointing straight down. Um, that's because when you take the secondary mirror out, and it's just going to fall straight out, you don't want it scratching anything, and took the secondary out very carefully and put it in a plastic bag. I'm just going to keep that like that uh, until I'm ready to put it back in. But let me show you. What happened? So here is the secondary mirror of the C11. Yours may or may not be fast star compatible, which means you can take it out and use a hyperstar uh, reducer, which is pretty cool. I've used them, they are amazing. Uh, but it's got the three screws here. So when you're taking out the secondary mirror, there is a ring around here, which you unscrew and then pull the mirror out slowly. Uh, don't take these screws out until later. But you might find that as you're collimating, you accidentally pull a screw out. If that ever happens, uh, stop and turn your telescope into that downwards configuration so you can then pull everything out downwards and do some repairs. Now what I did was actually take out these three screws entirely. And there's the mirror. Be super careful not to scratch this or anything. We'll have to clean this up after we're done. But. Uh, for now, let's just leave that there and take a look at this assembly. Now when I took the screws out, I noticed something. These are the screws that came out of the factory, but there was an odd one out. Can you tell the difference? The screws that are meant to be in are these coated. I think they're zinc and coated so that they stop oxide. And these guys have done pretty well. I don't see any oxide on them at all. However, there was a third screw that clearly wasn't coated. Because the screw was corroded to a point, there was a point where I couldn't actually go in any further. And so I couldn't properly collimate and lock that collimation in. Now, if you're really desperate, you can use WD-40, um, the original formula or the silicon spray. And you can leave that sitting in WD-40 for a night and maybe clean it up with a wire brush. But I don't want this back in the telescope. We're talking about the secondary mirror here. It's something I don't want any kind of oxide near at all. So I asked Lestron for the part number, 0.5 thread, God, I can't remember, I'll put it up here. That's what you need to get. And then I thought, well, if I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna replace all the screws at the same time. So putting the assembly back together, we're going to find the holes here and screw it back up. And we're gonna screw it back up with fresh screws. And this is where I noticed the first issue with collimation that I couldn't see until I had this assembly right in front of me. Um, there is a wobble, see that? So if you don't have everything tightened down perfectly, you can actually have mirror flop between each side of the meridian. So as your telescope moves, this flops from one side to the other. Now one mistake that you can also make is tighten up one really tight 
and so there's no flop but you're out of collimation you can see that this isn't straight what we want to have is an equidistant space between these three lines and that requires loosening off one but as soon as you loosen off one the flop returns so you actually have to tighten them loosen and tighten until you get a nice straight line that's still not straight so I'm just going to fiddle with this here loosen it off there's flop so I'm going to tighten this one now I can see this end is really thin compared to this end and herein lies the problem if I loosen this one off to give it more space I can get more space and then the flop returns so what I've discovered is that the process of collimation is actually something you have to do every three screws you loose, if you loosen one you have to tighten the others the opposite the two screws in this triangle okay I think I've got that fairly even around the whole disc now super fiddly and if I wasn't holding it in my hand that would be damn near impossible to do where I can actually see this section. When we're collimating with the scope live using a star, you have much less of an intuition of how this actually sits and you're going just by the star shape. So what we'll do, we've roughed it in this way first and now I'll put this back in the telescope and then we can collimate on a star later on tonight. I think it's clear. Of course my neighbour has decided to use a leaf blower right now because of course he is. Uh, now you'll notice here that there's a little notch right there. This notch correlates to a notch. This notch there you need to make sure they line up when you put these back in. Don't try and force it. If you do force it in without that notch lined up you could get it stuck there. Uh, it's, I've done that before. If you do get it stuck you can use a hairdryer Try and expand all the metal and gently wiggle it out. So we're going to line up the notch here and then we put the ring back on. Okay, it's reinstalled. You'll also notice this little slider here which you can use to hide the screws so after you're done with collimation you can flick it back over just to make sure you don't accidentally bump anything. We'll leave the screws exposed for now because we'll come back later tonight put this aim it at a star or a star field and then we'll make tiny tiny adjustments here to try and get the collimation in Now I'm outside here in the observatory. I'll tell you a little bit about how I've got this set up. Uh, but just so you know, uh, I'm doing this the manual way. This means no extra equipment. If you do want to get something a bit more fancy, like, you know, laser collimator devices or devices that help you collimate, uh, try the show sponsor, High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific are an American vendor and they stock all sorts of brands for all sorts of different stuff. I'm sure they've got something to help you collimate your telescope. Uh, ironically, I'm going to show you how to do it without any extra stuff, but uh, High Point Scientific do support this channel and you can build my, you can build this using all the links in the description down below. So check them out, www.highpointscientific.com. Let me tell you how this is set up. This is pointing at a brighter star field. You want to point towards the Milky Way if you can. There's heaps of stars there, plenty of bright stuff. Point towards anything that's bright. I'm using a red filter with a monochrome camera. Don't use a narrowband or anything like that. In this case, we want lots of light. You know, I've got a light here. It's, uh, it's not going to make any difference to what we're doing now. Now, you guys can see what's on my screen. Okay, so I can see exactly what you guys can see inside, uh, which will be very helpful while I do this process. The only tool you'll need is this PP, Phillips head part. Using only your PP, you can collimate the telescope. So let's start. We can see that the star is actually pretty good. I didn't expect it to be that good, but we did collimate this manually by hand, just by making sure that the assembly was flat, right? 
and that was close enough to, to get us this good, which I think is pretty good. Now I can see the three screws here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put my hand over the first screw and then watch the preview to see this update. You can see the black bar has gone over that part of the image. What I'm looking for is the thin section. So let's try this one over here. Closer. I'm looking for the thin section of the star. I'm going between two screws now. Yeah, it's sort of up this way. I think we are looking at this screw over here. Yeah. So this is the first screw we're going to adjust. Now when you make adjustments, make them very, very slight. This is super close to being perfect right now. Now the Celestron documentation recommends one tenth of a turn. So that's, it's really tempting just to screw it all the way just to see how things change. Uh, don't do that. Really just, it's a tiny, tiny little turn. So get your PP, put it in the screw. And tiny adjustment. Let's see what happens. Okay, I loosened it off. I think that looks better. No, that looks worse. So we actually need to tighten. So when the band is when the band is small on one side of the star, we actually need to tighten. Going a little more. Okay. And what I'm going to do is loosen off just a touch, one tenth, those other two screws on the opposite side. And tighten. Very slight improvement, so I'm going to keep going, loosening the opposite screws and tightening the one that is close to that band. That's looking better already. Oh, that is so close. So loosening off the opposite screws. I'm going super, super gently now. Wow, that is looking great. I think we can do another one. Maybe one more. I am super pleased with that and I'm so glad this demo went flawlessly. I didn't have to go too hard in any direction, but as I was saying, I only had to adjust one screw with the counter opposite adjustments to the opposite screws. We identified the screw that was on the thin part of the star and that was the one we had to adjust and then opposite adjustments corresponding to the other two screws. And it worked. So now I'm ready to go. And all you needed was your PP. Well, that all worked out pretty well, I thought. I didn't expect it to go so quickly, which is why I left it in real time in that so that you could see it and see exactly what was involved start to finish. So if you need to collimate your telescope, don't be scared, but do be aware of how things are constructed. Really pay attention to those opposite screws. And if in doubt, you can pull out the whole assembly 
and just make sure things are flat before you start. If you go way off track, if a screw comes loose or anything like that. Now I chose not to use Bob's knobs. I have used Bob's knobs in the past and I do recommend them. I'm taking test data on the Triffid Nebula and hopefully in a few days I'll have a new photo for the Instagram and for threads because I'm scared of Elon Musk and I'm scared of calling him out in public just in case he reads my Twitter DMs and crashes my car. And it's annoying because I've built 10,000 followers on Twitter. Used to use it all the time, used to engage with you guys. Now it's a bit of a wasteland, all the cool kids have left so find me on threads, find me on Instagram, YouTube of course, like and subscribe, blah blah blah, and keep tagging me in photos. You've been watching Star Stuff, my name is Dylan O'Donnell, and remember, everything's meaningless, and we're all going to die.